Hey y'all, Dina here. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a step-by-step -step guide on how to build your very own NAS. If you're interested in any of the parts that I use for this NAS build, you can check the description down below as well. It is going to be linked at the end of this video, which is my 2020 budget NAS build. And as well as my kit page is also linked in the description below. Now let's get to it. First, we're gonna start with the motherboard outside of the case. As you can see, my CPU is already installed. I didn't wanna take it out, just have to reinstall it. There is thermal paste on the bottom of the CPU as well as the top. Now, this is where the fan is gonna go. It's gonna go right on top of the, over the CPU, and it's gonna be held in with this bracket here. And then the bracket, as you can see on the back here, there are four little holes. Right there, there, and at the top. And then the bracket is just gonna fit nicely into those holes. Now, one thing is the bracket does not stay once you put it in, so you're gonna wanna make sure you're holding it when you flip it over. Installing the fan probably took the longest for me. The type of screws they are, they had a spring to them, so you had to make sure you had enough downward pressure to feed them into the holes properly. When screwing down the fan, you wanna make sure you have your hand on the bottom of the motherboard holding the bracket in place while applying that downward pressure onto each of the screws. Once you have the screws in just a little bit into each hole, then you can go back and tighten it down all the way. With the fan successfully installed, I'm gonna go ahead and add my one stick of four gigabytes worth of RAM. You wanna make sure the lever is popped open before you go ahead and try to insert the RAM. And just press down, make sure it's in there nice and tight, and then just close it on up. As you can see, the power supply is also installed. I did not want to take everything out. I had the cables exactly how I wanted them since it is a non-modular power supply. But I'm going to go ahead and get the motherboard inserted into the case. And everything's just going to snap in like so. Now that the motherboard is in place, it is time to secure it to the case. Now this motherboard has four areas where you can screw it down. Again, just like with the fan, just like anything, you want to get the screws in, but you do not want to tighten them down all the way until all screws are in their desired homes. As you can also see, the two Arctic fans are still installed in the case. The screws appear to be one-time screws, so I didn't want to have to take them out just to buy new screws to replace them. I'm going to start by doing the audio cable. Now, I will stress because of how little this case is and if even little tiny hands like mine, if you put the hard drives in first, you will not be able to fit things like the audio cable in. So make sure you do this.
Now I'm going to go ahead and add the 24 pin ATX power connector. Next I'm going to be going ahead and hooking up all of my fans. I'm going to start by adding the RGB connector. This is what's going to power all the different colors of my fan. Just going to kind of set it out of the way. I want it closer to the top even once the case is closed because if at any point in time I want to change the color, I want to make sure I have easy access to it. Next, I'm going to go ahead and hook up the main fan to the motherboard. And then I'm going to hook up the adapter for my two fans, like so. And then I'm going to take the other end and also connect that to the motherboard. And this is what is going to power all three fans. Next, I'm going to go ahead and connect the CPU adapter. Now, all of these parts, they snap right into place. So if you're having to force it, you're doing something wrong. So definitely be careful because all of these parts are very delicate. And lastly, before we get to the hard drives, we are going to connect the system panel connectors. Now I am going to do this off camera because these pins are very tiny and I needed a better view. So let's move on to the hard drives. Now I had a few questions about the hard drives on how did I fit six into this case. And this is where I'm going to show you. The case comes with two of these brackets that hold, as you can see, both a three and a half inch drive as well as a two and a half inch drive. So that right there is gonna give you four drives. And they fit on the edge of the case and they're just gonna go until you hear them snap in place. You wanna make sure you are aligning the two holes together where you're going to screw them down. This clicks right in there. Here are the first set of hard drives in their new home and then you can see here the little groove that is where they snap into place. And now we have four hard drives successfully installed. After you install the hard drives you want to make sure you secure them down and it's only going to take one screw to secure each um, bracket. So two screws total. Again, you want to tighten them down with your hands first before moving on to the screwdriver. And be sure you don't over tighten them because you don't want to strip the screws. And that is for all screws that we use here for this build. Now that we have the first for our hard drives installed, I'm going to go ahead and add the remaining two. First you need to do the PCIe card, so I'm going to go ahead and install that here. And everything fits in like so, and then I'm going to secure it down. And just one screw there. Now before I add the mounting bracket with the other two hard drives, I'm going to go ahead and add the SATA cables to the PCIe card because once they are installed with the mounting bracket these 90 degree heads that the SATA cables have it's very difficult to get them in place even with me with my tiny hands it was a bit of a challenge and here we have our mounting bracket with our remaining hard drives And 
you're going to place these right next to where the PCIe card is. And then again, you'll just secure it down with one screw. But as you can see, all the tension that is already put onto the SATA cable. So imagine trying to get those cables in there once this bracket's already secured down. So highly, highly recommend putting the cables in first. It may be easier though if you can find SATA cables that have both the straight edges on both sides instead of one side being straight and then one side being 90 degrees like we have here. With the mounting bracket successfully installed with the two hard drives, I'm going to add the remaining SATA cables as well as our SATA power. Now it is time to connect the remaining four SATA cables. Now, unlike connecting them to the PCIe card, these are going to go straight into the motherboard. Now I have four ports here. So the two outer ones are gonna hold our 90 degree end cables, and then the two middle ones will have the straight up and down. Once all four are in their proper homes, I'm going to go ahead and add the rest of the SATA cables to the actual hard drives. This tiny case really does not make well for good cable management. As you can see, the cables are just kind of all over the place, um, but I'm just gonna do my best to make do with what I have and just move what I can out of the way. But the reason I did the hard drives last is when I went to first install it, I did the hard drives first. I couldn't get the audio um, port in and then it made it a ginormous pain to hook up the fans as well. So that's why I'm doing the hard drives last. And then again, once the SATA cables are all connected, I'm gonna go ahead and add the SATA power cables. Now this side only had two adapt or two ports that came with the actual power supply. So we did have to buy an adapter so we could power the other two. With everything installed, I'm just going to go ahead and move some of the cables out of the way, try to tidy up as best as I can before I go ahead and close her up. Now that that's done, I'm going to go ahead and add the top panel as well as the sides to get her closed up. All the screws that are going to hold this case together are now all on the back side as well as that little cubby right there is going to be closed on up to hide everything and make it look pretty. Now the real test. Will she turn on and will she work? So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the power on the back and then the power button. And we have life, yay! Everything's working, all three fans are on, spinning like they should. Now I'm just gonna go on the computer and make sure I can pull up Unraid. And that's a wrap, y'all. I hope this step-by-step -step guide will help you on your future NAS build. Now, if you liked anything in this video or if this video helped you at all, be sure to Subscribe and ring that bell for notifications because you don't want to miss out on my next video Which is going to be comparing my NAS versus a Synology so definitely make sure you have your notifications turned on and I'll see you on the next one